Alrighty, it is time to uh, it is time to do Kanto Pokemon, Kanto Pokemon tier list. So there are many ways to go about this tier list. My personal liking, how good they are competitive, how much I like using them in the casual run is another is another point. How how I like them just overall in other games they're in. So th you're right. Th there's a slew of factors here I'm putting into. If I'm put, I'm putting into each Pokemon. So, so, so at base value, looking at the list, this list can sometimes maybe not make sense at at eye value. Like, you you'll see, because some Pokemon's not fully evolved form might be rated higher than them, than 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 their evolved form due to one reason or another. It's not just because the 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 fully evolved Pokemon is stronger. So, we, we have a lot to go. Stealth Rock, Stealth Rock, Stealth Rock. Uh, I actually like Stealth Rocks. <laughs> Alrighty. Trumpet's fully blaring. Let's get into it. So, I'm not gonna... I don't know if I'm gonna go in order. I may I may move around a little, to be honest. To be honest. I'm, I don't have to go in full order. Alright, but, but for starters, let's start. Let's start out. So, Bulbasaur, huh? This, this is already a big point of contention. Because this always comes down to the three the three starters, right? Bulbasaur can get a nice A. For for what it's worth, I do like Bulbasaur as a grass starter. I've used a Bulbasaur a handful of times in my countless red, blue, and yellow classic playthroughs, and I've have and I have used him in Fire Red and Leaf Green once in a while. Great, great Pokemon. Great, and of course, of course, we have to think about how well the matchups are against the gym leaders and all that. And Bulbasaur fares good. Bulbasaur is almost the easy route if you really, if, if you sort of think about it. Bulbasaur is almost the easy route. But I have a point of contention about that later. But yes, Bulbasaur, ni Bulbasaur, nice frog plant Pokemon. Ni nice, nice buddy. Cool. It was cool in the anime too. Especially its fight against uh, Meganium in the Silver Conference. That was a fucking great fucking fight. Alrighty. Next up, we have Ivysaur, and as every time I use Bulbasaur, I look forward to the point it evolves into Ivysaur. I love Ivysaur. I love its design. It turns a darker shade of, well, it, it's a little more bluish than Bulbasaur, so it has like a little blue teal going on, I, and I love its spots. It, it, it looks way better with a slight blue hue on the bottom. And of course, its bulb opens up and reveals the pink flower. Ivysaur's design is fucking fantastic also it's arguably the most famous bulbasaur evolution because it's in smash two of them it debuted in brawl and came back in ultimate it is the only one out of the bulbasaur line that has an amiibo it is arguably the most famous bulbasaur evolution and i'm so glad they i know pokemon trainers uh team were, were the three starters in different evolution you have squirtle evolution one ivysaur two and charizard for three i think that was a great denomination to choose from i'm so glad ivysaur got got uh representation in smash funny enough even over venusaur because this leads me to venusaur venusaur is a fine pokemon but he gets bottom he gets like bottom of a if Venusaur, after the Bulbasaur line is like cute here and cuddly, Bulbasaur, uh, Venusaur sort of turns ugly. I'm not gonna lie. Venusaur is kinda grody and ugly. Yeah, Venusaur in the 3D games doesn't go to 3D well, super well, easy. easy either. <laughs> Especially with the funny red eyes they give it. So that's my that's my take on the Bulbasaur line. I'm actually gonna skip over the rest of these lines until a little later. We're actually gonna go right over into Caterpie. And as far as Caterpie goes, it's pretty much everyone's first bug Pokemon. I like Caterpie for what it's worth. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna fast forward and just raid the rest of the line. Um Metapod can go slightly ahead of it, and for what it's worth, I do like, of course, I, I love Butterfree. I like the Caterpie line, it's everyone's sort of first bug Pokemon. It was Ash's first uh, secondary Pokemon too. But I've always had a soft spot for Butterfree. But butterflies are actually some of my favorite insects, little known fact about me. I actually had a butterfly, like, farm kit, like, grow, like raise your own caterpillar kit when I was a kid. And I successfully took care of them. 
for them to to to, to fully uh, to fully grow into butterflies. And I released them in the in my backyard garden. It was beautiful. So yeah, Butterfree, I've always had a software. I mean, Butterfree comes in a little clutch, too, in the early game. It learns confusion at level 10. Butterfree, fuck. So guys, pop quiz. Who is this? If you answered best Kanto starter, you're correct. I love Squirtle. I always have. Sure, he's colored blue, my affinity color, as you know. But I, I, my very first Pokemon game, which is Pokemon Blue, I started with Squirtle. Me and Squirtle, Squirtle was my first Pokemon ever, and that's an opinion me and Shell share. <laughs> as it's in his name, Shell and I love Squirtle. Squirtle's also my second favorite type. Water, water is Shell's favorite type. And also, I love War Turtle and Blastoise too. I think War Turtle looks fucking badass for a mid form. Ivysaur looks a little on the cuddly side. War Turtle looks badass, especially those wing ears of his. Damn, War Turtle fucks. And I couldn't be happier that Squirtle gets representation as Amiibo and in Smash, like I said about Ivysaur. I guess, I guess I do. I, I agree with you because I put War Turtle higher than Ivysaur. Yes, this whole Squirtle line looks fant. I love the Squirtle line so much. Um, every time, most. I, 80% of the time I replay red and blue, I choose Squirtle. I mean, Squirtle... Okay, now now here's now here's where the big hot take comes in. People always say Bulbasaur is the best starter. I disagree. I think it's Squirtle for a number of reasons. Bulbasaur sure has the grass advantage early in the game. So he's able to take care of Lieutenant Surge. And, and, and well, he takes care of Misty easier than Squirtle who ties with Misty. And he takes care of Surge who Squirtle loses to. But Bulbasaur falls off late game. Venusaur falls off late game. You, eventually, you he doesn't do well against Sabrina at all because he's part poison, and and the and the elite four sort of fuck Bulbasaur line. I keep saying Bulbasaur, you know what I mean. The elite four sort of fucks him. Lorelai may have water half water Pokemon, but they still use Ice Moose. And while Bruno's easy, Agatha as Venusaur is hard. But you know, and you, and Lance has flying dragons who will times four resist grass. You know who doesn't suffer with that problem? The Squirtle line. Because we can learn Ice Beam. We can learn the fantastic move Ice Beam. So, I look, people, I think Pokemon fans are wrong. I think Bulbasaur is not the best starter. It's Squirtle. Because Squirtle gets better, the Squirtle line gets better coverage for its weaknesses. Or or, or or OP Blizzard back in Gen 1. Yes, that, that works too, sure. So, we can talk about a uh, worst Kanto starter, which is Charmander. So, this isn't coming from a point of contention or anger or bias. Charizard is overrated as fuck. We know that. He's gotten, the, he's gotten a lot of starring Kanto roles. He was the only Pokemon in Smash 4. Uh... He got he got the first Dynamax. He got he got the he got two Megas and the first Dynamax. It, it, yeah, people who love Charizard short nut nut the Hot. shit out of it. The people who don't like Charizard get tired of it. I uh, Charizard's okay. To be fair, I had a really good Charizard when I played through Yellow on the 3DS Virtual Console. I actually had a really good Charizard. I and I and even then, out of respect, I still have his amiibo. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. The only Pokemon trainer Pokemon in Smash 4. Let me let me rephrase. I did say that wrong. Charmeleon, I like better than the other two. For, well, for one reason. Well, mm, I don't know. Is that really fair to Char Charizard's in Smash. Charizard's in Smash. But Charmeleon was... Charmeleon was in Pokemon Puzzle League. Charmeleon did never listen to Ash, though. Charizard eventually does listen to Ash, but if you think about it, Charmeleon in its whole life cycle didn't listen to Ash. That's interesting. And to be fair, Charmeleon didn't stop listening to Ash for no good fucking reason either. Yeah, never mind. Charmeleon's trash. I don't know what I was thinking. My bad. I let my Puzzle League bias blind me. Charmeleon's trash. Anyway, so Weedle. Weedle is trash. Weedle, the Weedle line is absolute garbage. It is bug poison. It'll, it'll get walled by Brock when you first catch it in Viridian Forest. It won't serve any sort of distinct use later in the game. It is poison. It still can't use his bug move against Sabrina. It'll get its asshole rocked. Beedrill is garbage. I will. I used one once on an all poison team when I was a kid, and I still fucking throw up thinking about it. Ass. 
Alrighty, so now we have Pid uh, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot. These might- this might be the first line that's a little separated. Because I th Pidgeot's fucking awesome. I love Pidgeot to death. Pidgeot gets a nice A tier from me. Pidgey and Pidgeot. I mean, Pidgey's alright as far- I mean, again, I have to think- I'm trying to set- I, I, I'm thinking about the four factors. I- I, um... I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Like... I mean, yeah, like, Pidgey, Pidgey, Pidgey has a, Pidgey have a, like, base Pidgey, it's alright. Base Pidgey, eh. I mean, it's generic, you see it everywhere. Maybe, maybe it actually, it probably goes B. A Pidgeotto I love, though. Pidgeotto gets top of B. I once had, like, a really cool Pidgeotto Pokemon card back when I was a kid. I always thought Pidgeotto was a badass midbird. Rattata. Uh... I do not like Rattata. Based Rattata. I think Rattatas get annoying. Especially with their little ah! cry, too. Fucking grained into my ears. Raticate? Raticate's okay. I know Raticate can be a, can be an underrated powerhouse in Gen 1. Because speed is based on crits. And it gets good stab from its normal moves. Radic Raticate's a l I can understand Raticate being a decent powerhouse. But it sort of falls off in, in later Gens. I don't know, you know what, this may be a little weird, this may be weird, but I'm actually going to separate the Butterfree line on the, on the tier list. Raticate can go right behind it. Again, I really only put these things up near Butterfree just to keep it as a family, in certain cases. I know, this, this is going to be a back and forth, a little weird sort of, sort of like reasons why I put Pokemon where they are, I know. It's going to go a little back and forth. I'm going to try and make it make as much sense as possible. Spiro. I was, I thought... Spiro's a cooler bird than base Pidgey, but Firo is not as cool as the rest of the Pidgeotto line. I'll probably put Firo right here, actually. Firo is still somewhat useful. It has a it has a higher attack stat, but I know I'm I know I'm being futuristic biased because I I said I wouldn't mention Megas, but Firo eventually does get left in the dust because Pidgeotto gets a uh, Pidgeot gets a Mega, and Firo doesn't. Ekans and Arbok suck dick. Jesse sure, surely got the short end of the stick when it comes to Pokemon, because Arbok sucks. It has it has no good moves, no good stats. We Weezing is a separate story entirely. We'll get to Weezing. Arbok sucks. Jesse got the short end of the stick. That's why James is better than Jesse in any way, shape, or form. Just James is the true homie. The only thing that saves it from lower tier is that it's its iconic presence in the in the anime. That's the only thing that saves it. Alrighty, next up we have Pikachu. The most popular Pokemon in existence. Pikachu gets an S. Call me a conformer if you want, but yeah, Pikachu gets an S. I mean, it's the most famous Pokemon for a reason. It's cute. He and Ash have been friends for, for 25 years. Like, damn. Pikachu was my main in Smash 64. I I got into I got into Smash Brothers 64 because of Pikachu. I remember I remember my friend bringing over Smash 64 before I even like really heard of it, and we played it. I'm like, whoa! All these Nintendo characters fighting, and there's Pikachu. <laughs> it's Pikachu. I would eventually become a Young Link main. It would eventually would evolve into a Joker main and a Young Link second. I I would I would go I would go Pikachu Young Link Toon Link Toon Link. Young Link to start out with in Smash 5, but then eventually moving on to Joker with Young Link in the back. So that that's my that's my Smash character evolvement chain main. But but Pikachu, but I owe a lot to Pikachu. Of course, and he's the main character of Pokemon Yellow. The, Pikachu started the whole Pokemon walking behind you thing all the way back in 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 the in the sister version to Red and Blue. Raichu. Ooh. Spicy. Raichu is a great Pokemon also. I have a great competitively trained Raichu. I love using it. Uh, Raichu probably gets top of A. I love Raichu. Raichu is a quintessential electric Pokemon for me. No, there's not really much to say. I mean, of course, we have the iconic Pikachu versus Raichu battle with Lieutenant Sir's Jim in the anime. Classic. Give him the Dunderbolt and all that. <laughs> but again, e even as myself as a player, I, I love Raichu. Sandshrew. Now, of course, Sandshrew has itself an iconic episode. The one where Ash fights that guy Sandshrew and gets his booty cheeks clapped. <laughs> uh, Sandshrew's okay. 
Sanshu, I'm gonna put the Sanshu line in B tier. Sanshu's okay, I used one like once. It's not it's not my first choice of ground Pokemon when it comes to when it comes to Kanto. My first choice of ground Pokemon is actually right below us right now. The Nidoran lines, I love them. I love them so much. They're pretty much all gonna go into oh uh uh uh, uh no, they're gonna go ahead of Pidgeot. I love the Nidoran line. This the, the famous Nidoran male is used for speed running Pokemon red and blue Gen 1 this very day. But I always love Nidoking. It still has a very unique typing, poison ground. Very, very unique. And Nido King and Nido Queen's awesome Nido Queen and King Nido Queen's awesome adaptability and why and and wide move pool make it great. Good good Pokemon. Of course you can you can cheese the game by having Nidorino in Mount Moon and evolve it immediately and having a crushing Nido King to sweep the early game. Nido King I mean there's a reason this is the most famous speedrunning Pokemon. There's a reason. There's a reason. And yes, and the, the Nido's designs are the precursor to the male and female gender differences and even just Pokemon having gender before it happened one gen earlier. This was the precursor. So it shows they were thinking about this back in Gen 1. I mean, even then, Gen 2 Pokemon were cut from Gen 1, so it, uh, it clearly shows that, that this was a, an idea on their mind from the very beginning. Did you know that Nidoqueen and Jinx are the only Pokemon with visible breasts? Yes, Nidoqueen even shakes them in her stadium animation, I remember. But I didn't nut to it, I'm not a furry. Clefable, I love Clefable. Cl the Clefairy Clefable line. They are phenomenal special attackers. Although, admittingly, Clefable doesn't... I mean, Clefable gets a decent move pool in Gen 1 if you use TMs, but it is, its level up set is booty butt cheek. But I, I have a well-trained competitive Clefable. It, it's fucking awesome. Vulpix. I actually used a Vulpix in my 3DS blue version. It's Vulpix was a blue version exclusive. And I used one in my 3DS playthrough. So spoilers, if I don't go Growlithe, the Vulpix line is my choice for a backup fire. Because I never choose the fire starter. Pfft. I'm I'm always rocking I'm always rocking Team Squirt, baby. So I need a fire Pokemon to take care of those pesky grass. So if I'm in the mood for a fire Pokemon, Ninetales is always a decent choice. If I'm playing blue, Growlithe is red specific, so it just depends on the version I'm playing. So, you know what? We'll we'll jump ahead and just grade Growlithe right now. So, Growlithe, I love Arcanine. I love the Growlithe Arcanine line. I I they, they they are my quintessential choice for fire Pokemon in in Gen 1. They have fantastic stats. I used an Arcanine in my Let's Go Pikachu playthrough since Pikachu's version is based on on red version so we got the red exclusive pokemon see since i like pikachu so much i got let's go pikachu i love i love arcanine i mean there's a reason why your rival uses it in red and blue it's a good it's a good pokemon i think it has like 600 base stats or something or it's like or it has, or it has like late like 500 base stats like it's really good all right moving on jigglypuff and wigglytuff this is going to be a very interesting separation wigglytuff gets top of b tier I don't really like its design too much, and Wigglytuff is unfortunately a diet cl Clefable. It it has a way more HP than Clefable, but it loses out in in special attack. I do actually have a fully trained up Wigglytuff that's competitive also. It's a little different than the Clefable, but when push comes to shove, I would gun to head. I would rather use the Clefable. Jigglypuff, on the other hand, has a lot more steam to itself. One, it's famous because of Smash Brothers. It's been in four Smash Brothers. No, I'm sorry, five. It's been in all five, I'm sorry. Old man me, I forgot there for a second. It's been in five Smash Brothers games. Of course, famous player Hungrybox mains him. Her. Them. Jigglypuff. And to be honest, I like Jigglypuff too. I even, of course, I still respect enough to get it Smash Amiibo. I'm not super good with Jigglypuff and Smash, but it makes you think. To be honest, I never played the Mystery Dungeon game, so I don't know how these Pokemon are, are characterized or have their character arcs in that game, admit, admittingly. Doesn't like doesn't like Grovel die or something and it's like super sad? Everyone always talks about that scene. I'm thinking actually right here. Again, just due to, ju just due to its famousness, Jigglypuff outbeats the Clefable line. Of course, battle-wise, it's not going to outbeat the Clefable line, but due to its famousness, again... It, 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 Jigglypuff is in the best-selling fighting game of all time. That is not to be taken lightly. These these characters 
These characters are in the best-selling fighting game of all time. That is not to be taken lightly. Zubat and Goldbat. This is this is where this is where the grading's gonna get a little tough for me. Zubat and Goldbat. Now, eventually, Crobat would exist, and Crobat is a phenomenal competitive ca and casual Pokemon to use, because it's so easy to get one. All you do is just give Goldbat happiness. It's so easy to get a, Cro a Crobat in Gen 2 or Gen f or Gen 4, Gen 2 remakes, whatever, whatever you want. It's so easy, and Crobat's so good. And of course, we have the stigma that Zubat's annoying in Mount Moon and Caves... We have the cla I'm just thinking I'm just thinking through random stuff. We have the classic Ashes Charmander versus Gold Kolga's Goldbat in his fifth gym battle all the way back in the anime. I'm just thinking about a lot of Brock catches a Zubat eventually, eventually becomes a Crobat in Golden in the in the Johto region. I'm gonna put them my my brain is telling me I'm gonna put them right here. No, actually. I take it back. No um mm. Zubats are sort of annoying. Like, I want to put Zubat lower, because they, they are sort of annoying in caves. I don't, like, despise... They, I don't despise them like they killed my firstborn child, like some Pokemon fans, but they, he... They, it is annoying. It, it is annoying. I don't know. But but they would eventually become Crobat, and Crobat... I fucking love my Crobat that I trained up. But then again, this Pokemon... These Pokemon we're talking about aren't Crobat, so... So, I'll move them down a little. They'll, they'll go right here, actually. Ah, Oddish. Oddish, Oddish, Oddish. And the ever-famous Gloom, especially with its anime episode of Ash fighting Erica, and Eri my my waifu Erica, not allowing males into her gym. Oddish is kind of annoying. You see it everywhere, so it gets put right next to Zubat. The reason why it's one step lower than Zubat is because Vile Plume eventually doesn't become as good as Crobat. Gloom gets higher though. Gloom gets like up a little higher in B. No, 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 not better than Pidgeotto. I, I, I lied. Gloom can get right there, and Vileplume can end up right there. I've used a Vileplume once. It was all right. It's a, it's a decent grass Pokemon, but to be fair, there are better grass Pokemon to use in, 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 in Kanto. The, the unfortunate part about it is that most grass Pokemon in Kanto will share the poison type, and and Sabrina and the overpowered psychic type or, or that courses throughout Gen 1 will clap your booty cheeks. Paris and Parasect. These Pokemon are the first Pokemon to get D tier. These Pokemon are not good. Bug Grass is not good. You will, you will get your cheeks clapped by fire easily. But Paris is also slow. The one redeeming factor about it is that it learns Spore. But I used a Parasect once. I was not a happy camper. Venonat and Venomoth. Cool. Venonat and Venomoth. Again, we have the famous episode in, with Koga's gym. Venomoth is hella underwhelming in my opinion. I, I, I don't really use Venonat that much. Ven Venomoth is just worth Butterfree. Because Butterfree learns... I, I believe Venomoth doesn't learn Sleep Powder, or just learns Stun Spore. So... So... So, but the Butterfree is better than Venomoth for a number of reasons. One, it learns the powerful psychic moves, like I mentioned earlier. Venomoth is part poison, so it gets earthquaked. It, it, it's a bug that... It's a flying bug... Well, it's a flying bug that gets earthquaked. It's also part poison, which means you get your booty clapped by psychic. Again, the psychic prevalency in Gen 1 is not to be understated. <laughs> So yeah, Venom, Venom, Venomoth can end up down there. Diglett and Dugdrio. I used a Dugdrio once. It was all right. I'm a, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna flash forward to the future. I'm a bigger fan of a Lowland Dugdrio to be honest. But Dugdrio was always a good pinch to get because it's right next to Lieutenant Surge and you can clap his booty cheeks with it. So Dugdrio definitely has its use per se. And I do like Dugdrio better than Sand Slash. So I think I'll put the Dugdrio line right here in in B. Meowth. I love Meowth, actually. Who can forget ever-famous Meowth? I love Meowth. Of course, it's it's famous, famous, famous in the anime. But as far as normal types go, I like I like it too. I, I, I use Meowth every now and then when I play through blue version. Because Meowth is a blue version exclusive. So, I mean, what's there to say about Meowth? One of the famous characters in the anime. It's in He's in every, every episode, pretty much. Has that funny, wise guy attitude. But Meowth, again, we're talk I'm talk I'm reaching deep in my memories here, way, way back in in Gen, in even before Gen two existed. Meowth was like one of my top ten favorite Pokemon, even maybe top five. 
Persian is alright. Of course, you want a fully evolved Persian to be competitive with. And a lowland Persian is pretty hilarious, too, with its puffy-ass Garfield cheeks. Uh, Persian gets... But, uh, but I, I'm not, like, a super fan of Persian design. I mean, it is famous, though. It is famous, though, for a number of reasons. Of course, Giovanni's Persian is big. Giovanni's Persian is big in the anime, of course. It would eventually go on to beat Ash's Pikachu in Gen 5, when Giovanni and Ash finally meet face to face. Persian was also in Pokemon Puzzle League. It is the only normal type in Pokemon Puzzle League. It had these beautiful blue, royal blue blocks in Pokemon Puzzle League. The only time you can see them is if you use Giovanni in Persian. Alright, so now we have Psyduck and Golduck. Who can't forget the classic Orange Islands episode where Misty mistakes a Golduck for hers and she fights that other water trainer for it? Psyduck and, and, and who can forget how famous Psyduck is anime wise. To be fair though, me using them as a Pokemon trainer, I never really used Golduck that much. Uh, where would I put Golduck? Uh, Golduck can be like right here. Psyduck is another is an interesting case though. Psyduck is more anime famous than Golduck. Who can't forget Misty's classic Psyduck? Who ended up beating Ash in the World Cup. Psyduck would probably be higher tier just due to anime famousness. You know what? Right here, actually. I know it feels weird to split up Gloom, but... Yeah. Yeah. Psyduck can be right there due to anime famousness. Mankey, speaking of anime famousness, Mankey and Primate. Who can't forget Ash's Primate? <laughs> it did win the fighting championship. But unfortunately, Primeape itself isn't exactly great, especially in Gen 1, where it doesn't really learn any fighting moves except for Low Kick. Mankey, Primeape, it's, it's, it's a weird mix of being anime famous for one episode, or a few episodes, and and not good, actually, in-game. At least in Gen 1. Actually, it's still not good even nowadays. Its stats are too low, it has a low base stat total. I'm pro and, and it's a shame, though, because... because because you can get a Mankey early in, in yellow, and I would love to, but Mankey's not a really good fighting type. Which is a shame, because fighting is my favorite type. I mentioned water was my second favorite type, and it's Shellshock Prime's favorite type. Fighting is my favorite type. And actually, it's funny, this is the first fighting Pokemon we're getting to the list, now that I really look at it. I never, I never really realized that Mankey is the first fighting Pokemon in the, in the lineup. Anyway, yeah, Mankey and Primeape can go right above Venomoth. They're unfortunately underwhelming. Oh, you know what? You know what combines our two favorite types together? Polyrath. I fucking love Polyrath. I love Polyrath. Polyrath is a great Pokemon. Polyrath gets nicely top of A. Poliwhirl and Poliwag 2 are also really good. Who can't forget Misty's Poliwag and Poliwhirl, who would eventually become a Politoed in, in the Johto anime. The I, I love this line altogether. The poly I mean, I usually don't double down on Poliwag. If I'm using Squirtle, but if I'm using Bulbasaur playthrough, yeah, Poliwrath Poly is in due to water coverage and fighting coverage. It's a good, po it's a good Pokemon. Poliwhirl and I mean, I had a Poliwhirl like little collectible figure too when I was a kid. Also, it was pretty dope. Poliwhirl, Poliwhirl probably ends up somewhere around here on the tier list. Poliwag, Poliwag probably ends up around here. Again, I'm sort of balancing out the the how much I like their design, how much they mean to me, anime famous. And you know, I'm still balancing all that out. That, that's pretty decent. Ah, the ever-famous Abracadabra Alakazam line. It's funny, all three of these Pokemon... No, 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 not all of them. Just, just Abra and Alakazam are in... Are in, um... Are in... It's funny, all three of these Pokemon are famous in their own way. One, Psychic is busted, so everyone remembers Alakazam. Your rival uses Alakazam in the game. Abra and Alakazam were two of Sabrina's Pokemon in Pokemon Puzzle League. Kadabra itself is famous for the anime episode, where it, where it bodies Ash a bunch of times. <laughs> You're looking at a very famous line here. Alakazam gets... Well, one, I have a, I have a, a competitively trained Alakazam. It gets S-tier. Abra... Gets somewhere in A. I'm still thinking about it. Kadabra gets somewhere in A also, obviously. Kadabra probably gets right up here. I mean, who can who, I mean, everyone for, everyone remembers that episode where Ash was going to be trapped as a doll. You can't fucking abduct people in Pokemon. It's a goddamn kids show. What were you doing, Sabrina? You goddamn criminal. Persians in Pokemon Puzzle League also... It can go ahead of Clefable. Ah, the Machamp line. I love the Machamp line. My premier choice of fighting types when it comes to Gen 1. Of course, I have to find someone to trade with when it comes to Gen 1, because Machamp's a trade evolution. But damn, I love me some Machamp. Machamp can go right there. 
Machop can go somewhere in A tier, and Machoke is also really fucking good. <sighs> Alright, Machoke. Machoke can... <laughs> Machoke... <laughs> Choke my what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Macho can go right here. Machop can go... Because Machop you can get pretty early in the game, right around Cerulean. Right here. Alright, the bell... Oh, man. The bell... The, the bell sprout line. So two of these poke... Well, actually three of these Pokemon are technically famous in their own way. Who can't forget the episode where Bellsprout starts making a comeback against Ash's team and it's up to Monk to stop it? This goddamn brawlic Bellsprout out of nowhere. Of course, Victory Bell is famous because Brock... Uh, not Brock, sorry. James had one. And it would always eat his head. Weeping Bell is... Well, actually... Well, okay. Weeping Bell is famous for two and one and a half reasons it was one of erica's pokemon in the gym battle episode and it is one of erica's pokemon in pokemon puzzle league so uh, these pokemon are all differently famous if i uh, it's so tough because everyone remembers the bell spread episode but weeping bell technically has a long lasting game of pokemon puzzle league on its side victory bell is is hella famous and and i like victory bell i like his design for the most part I think it lo it's a physical attacker, though, in Gen 1, so it's not super useful in Gen 1 as a physical grass Pokemon. But it gets more useful later on down the road. Uh, probably... But due to its anime famous, I'm going to put it at bottom of A. Bellsprout... Oh, also, Bellsprout is blue-specific, if I remember correctly. Bellsprout... Bellsprout can go ahead of Gloom. They're both a they both have one anime where episode where they're very famous. Oh, then again, Bellsprout did bo well. No, Bellsprout bodied Ash a little, so yeah, there we go. That's fine. Weeping Bell. Oh. Weeping Bell has Pokemon Puzzle League on its side, so it goes it goes one step ahead of Bellsprout. Um, oh, Tentacruel. I love Tentacruel. What a good water Pokemon. Well, again, we're not, when, we're, uh, again, Gen 1 has so many good fucking water Pokemon. Sometimes when I don't use Polyrath, I'm not in the mood to, or, or if I'm in another Gen, actually, uh, one time I used Tentacruel that was really good was on my Gen 3 team. Now, spoiler alert in advance, I love Mudkip to death, so I was doubling down on water Pokemon. But ten but I encountered a level 36 Tentacruel in the ocean that was right up to my level, so I caught it right away. So Tentacruel, I mean, Tentacruel is hella good. It's a good Pokemon. It has fantastic defenses, has decent special attack, it's bulky as fuck, and has some good coverage moves. Tentacruel can probably be right there. I love Tentacruel to death. Tentacruel is, I mean, it's a good design. Kind of cool can go right behind, like, Machop. It's, like, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Geodude, Graveler, and Golem. So, these three Pokemon, let's see where, let's see where we can take them off from. So, Geodude, of course, very famously used by Brock in both the game and the anime, where he bodied Ash the first time. Graveler was, at one point in the anime, used by uh, Giselle to beat Misty Starmie in a wild uh, sort of uh, uh, battle where where di where it was at disadvantage, but they tried to pass it off as levels and shit, sometimes weirdly in the anime. You know that whole shit. Golem was famously used by Gary, where it got knocked out in one Dragon Rage from Ash's Charizard. I believe Gar Gary actually also against Giovanni in his gym battle against Giovanni, where he eventually gets mind-fucked by Mewtwo. So we have a lot going for here. I think, due to famousness, I think Geodude will end up somewhere around here. Graveler and Golem is probably going to be a little lower. Also, as far as game-wise goes, I don't like super duper like using them. You know what? They can go right here. This is where this is where this is how I feel about. Them. Ah, the Rapidash line. So who can't forget the famous episode where they enter the race and Ash has to ride the Ponyta, and at first it burns him, but then it learns to trust him. Dojo is also famous in that episode, too. Blaine uses a Rapidash in his gym team. Um, But to be fair, they weren't really my premier choice of fire types. Rapidash can go... Rapidash can go here and Ponyta can... Actually, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the Ponyta family right down here, actually. I was, I was, I was, they were a little too high. They're just due to anime famousness. Again, you have better choices for fire types in Gen 1. 
Alrighty. Ah, Slowbro. I love Slowbro and Slowpoke. They are good Pokemon. You get them a little late in the game, but damn, they are good Pokemon. Slowbro. Again, Water Psychic, good typing. Psychic being busted. Slowbro can go, like, right here. Slowpoke. Who can't forget the famous Slowpoke right on... Bill's the, the way to Bill's house that one trainer used them. So let's go right here Magneton. I love Magneton Magnemite well Magneton is in Pokemon Puzzle League. It's a pretty good electric type if I'm not feeling right you It's in Pokemon snap right around here Magnemite also really dim also pretty good ah! Magnemite can go like right here. Uh, let me move these around a little uh Clefable should be a little more up more. There we go. Because I do think Clefable's better than Mag Magneton. And my and my competitively trained Clefables performs better, so yeah. Uh, Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd is trash. The, on the only good thing about this thing is that it can evolve into Surfetch finally in Gen 8. Which is a fighting type. And one of my favorites. But base Farfetch sucks. So Doduo and Dodrio. Dodrio is very anime famous. Of course being the the competitor's Pokemon he would ride on. That southern guy. I fucking forget his name. Uh, Dodrio as a normal flying type is actually really good though. It's fast and strong and learns Tri-Attack. Which is good in Gen 1 because normal type moves are all physical. Tri-Attack eventually becoming special wouldn't be good for Dodrio. But Dodrio kind of fucks actually. Jojo probably ends up going like right here, just slightly above Pidgeot. I like Pidgeot's design more, but I can't, but I can't argue that Dojo isn't the better bird type. Uh, Do, yeah, and, and Doduo can go right down here somewhere in the B tier. It's it's I. Yeah, Doduo can go right, 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 right here. Seal and Dugong. Ah, Seal and Dugong, ever famously used by Loreline. Dugong is in Pokemon Puzzle League with its Dugong, Gong, Gong. But it's not a great water ice type. Lapras sort of, Lapras sort of stands above it in like every shape or form. Dugong can probably go like top of. It still can learn ice moves, which are really good, especially for Gen One to take care of that pesky Lance Dragons. But Dugong can get like top of B tier. Seal can be like Seal can be like around here. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind fast forwarding to the Gengar line right now. He's only a few steps ahead. I love Gengar. Gengar is one of my favorite Ghost Pokemon of all time. I'm sure it's a competitively. Oh, uh, sure it's a competitive. I, I love Gengar. I've, I've competitively trained one. <laughs> I love using it. Um, Gengar ends up right around here. I love Gengar. Of course, everyone loves Gengar. It's one of the most famous Pokemon. It's in Pokemon Tournament, I believe. It's good competitively. Has a mega evolution and all that jazz. Yeah, Gengar's famous for reasons. It's a good, it's a good as Pokemon. It deserves to be. Who, who can forget? And again, these ghost Pokemon are famous, especially Ash's Haunter, due to the the famous uh, Ghost uh, Tower episode. Haunter probably ends up around here. Oh, Gengar's in Pokemon Unite also. I, I, th th thanks for fact checking that, buddy. Oh, that's Grimer. What am I doing? Uh, Ghastly. Oh, and who can't forget the very creepy, still one of my favorite episodes, the very creepy Maiden's Peak episode with Ghastly. Ghastly premiered earlier in the series, not just in the Ghost Tower. And with the Maiden's Peak episode. Still one of my favorite creepy episodes. Ghastly itself is actually pretty weak as a base type. You, have to, you really have to wait till it evolves to get, like, good. Ghastly can go, like, right here. Ghastly itself, as stat-wise, is not great base wise but of course haunter eventually fucks as a mid form and gengar fucks as a final evo muck and grimer and the ever famous episode about the power plant getting stuffed up and ash catching the muck which would eventually beat the bell sprout now i've always had a soft spot for muck i think its defensiveness is like really good i think it's an underrated poison type actually muck can go higher in B tier and to be honest I used to like Grimer's I know this may sound fucking weird and hella out of pocket I actually sort of like Grimer's design he looks like a melting grimace I actually I actually once as a kid made a paper mache model of Grimer's sprite in red and blue where he has his like hands like directly up 
I, I know that seems so weird. Wait, you like the pile of sludge Pokemon design? I'm like, kind of, yeah. I it's 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 simple in a very good way. Grimer can go like right here. Shelter and Cloister. I do not like Shelter that much. Shelter Shelter and Cloister and I have never really jibed well. Cloister is kind of ass in Gen One. It's too defensive and too attack based to make use of its water ice typing. It eventually gets better in the later gens, getting Shell Smash. Shelter can go right like in D tier. Cloister, on the other hand, I may not jive with Cloister, but Cloister has a few things going for it. One, it gets better in later gens. Two, Cloister's in Pokemon Puzzle League with the ever-famous Cloister cry. When Lorelei uses one. Yeah, haha, -ha, Cloister. Yeah, oh yeah, and it's right next to Onyx, too. Haha, -ha, dick and pussy. I mean, I forgot to mention, Butterfree is also in Pokemon Puzzle League also. Richie uses one. Cloyster can end up right here in front of Golduck. It's po Cloyster's Pokemon Puzzle League famousness saves it from being any lower. I mean, who can forget the Cloyster? Onyx is booty. Well, mm. Onyx is a weird case. It's normally trash, but it's very famous for being used by Brock and and kicking Charmander starters in the balls, which I do have to give it thanks for. Onyx is also in Pokemon Puzzle League, and its cry is fucking deep. And Rory, it, it has a great cry in Pokemon Puzzle League. It's technically not better than Arbok, though. It's technically not better than Arbok. And Onyx does eventually evolve into Steelix. I'm sort of just grading it as a Gen 1 Pokemon. Drowsy and Hypno. So, they have a, they have a few famous episodes. Uh, Drowsy has the first episode with, with, the, with the Evolutions, and it was mind-controlling that uh, rooftop party. And Drowsy has the Orange Island episodes where he's taking control of Pokemon's mind and causing Pikachu and Meowth to run away. Causing Ash and Team Rocket team up to team up together. Hypno is being a little famous due to it being used by uh, Harrison in uh, the Silver Conference. Where it would beat Ash's Totodile but eventually get destroyed by his Snorlax. Uh, I used a Hypno in my most recent Pokemon Blue playthrough. It was pretty decent. For not having anyone to trade with to get Alakazam, it was pretty decent. Hypno probably ends up, like, right here. Drowsy can end up right... Base Drowsy isn't half bad either. Oh, I just realized, Need Arena's messed up on the list. Drowsy can be right here. Also, yeah, I messed up. There we go. Actually, to be honest... Ah, oh, no, these are fine. Actually, no, to be honest, I should mix these up a little, because these are fully evolved and these aren't. It should technically go like that, to be to be fully fair. Uh, Krabby and Kingler. So, two, two, two decently well-known Pokemon. Ash caught a Krabby, eventually evolved in Kingler. Kingler three-stocked the, the freaking psychic guys, the first battle of the, the Pokemon League. Who The guy who used the Executor and the Seedra and the, and the Gold Bat. Uh, Kingler, Krabby and Kingler would also be featured in Pokemon Puzzle League as one of Gary's Pokemon. Gary would also have a Kingler. He used Kingler against Giovanni's gym battle, where again, he gets mental fucked by Mewtwo. Krabby and, King, and, and Kingler's pretty... And now moving on to actual battle-wise, Kingler's pretty tight. It's, again, it's an, it's an attack-based water Pokemon, so it's not good in its debut gen, but eventually becomes a little better. I'd probably put Kingler's... Like around here. Krabby. Actually, no. Kingler's not more famous than... Than... Than Psyduck. There we go. Around here. Krabby can go right around here. <laughs> but yes, that is understandable. Alright, what's next? Ooh, Voltorb and Electrode. Ah, the Pokeball Pokemon. Of course. And not Jigglypuff seen from above. Uh... These Pokemon are okay. I'm not gonna call their design lazy. To be honest, I actually think it's pretty ingenious to make an electrical Pokemon based off of the Pokeball itself due to the Pokeball being an electronic device. It also is ingenious that this is the Mimic in Pokemon Red and Blue and Yellow. This is the Mimic you run in in the, in the Power Plant. I think that's actually a genius idea. As people want to say Voltorb design is too simple and call it trash, it's actually based off of something genius. So, I think Voltorb deserves its place in A. Along with Electrode. 
Electrode is also hella fast. Electrode is actually pretty useful too, but it's not my first choice when it comes to electric Pokemon. Ah, Execute and Executor. I love Executor. It is my premier choice for a grass Pokemon in Gen 1. It also has the Psychic uh, type, which of course, as we know, is busted. It's not weighed down by all the grass poison mo motherfuckers below it. I, ra I actually used an Executor in Let's Go Pikachu, and it was fantastic. Execute is pretty yite. As, again, again, as its base form, Execute's pretty yite. Execute can be like right here. Execute's yite. Again, Electrode is fine. Look, I, I'm not the one who- I don't hate the Electrode line because I know Electrode gets some shit for having a basic design. Again, it's genius. They made a Mimic in Gen 1 Pokemon. A Mimic JRPG-styled enemy. Using their own creative creature design. Like, that's good. Ah, the ever-famous Cubone and Marowak. The sad Pokemon. The Sag Pokemon. Marowak, of course, being the ever-famous ghost that guards the top floor of the tower. You have to either self-scope past it, or use the very famous Pokédog glitch. Marowak is not my first... well, is it my first choice of Grand Pokémon? Grand Pokémon aren't actually really good in Gen 1. To be honest, I, I again, I do like it when it transforms into Ghost Fire and it's a low in form. Marowak is... Uh, I'm, I've never fully jived with it. It can go, like, right here. Ah, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. I like Hitmonlee better. I think Hitmonlee is actually my, besides Machim, Hitmonlee is also a good choice of a fighting type in, 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 in Gen 1. Hitmonlee learns great moves. You know what's wrong with Hitmonchan? In Gen 1, all the punches are special, and Hitmonlee's special is ass. Hit, Hitmonchan would eventually become a little better, but again, I'm, I'm going for all the, also, canonically, Hitmonlee beat Hitmonchan in the, um, in the fighting tournament episode of Pokemon, so there we go. Hitmonchan isn't bad per se, I have one also, but Hitmonlee is the superior choice. It can go ahead of Victory Bell. Ah! No, it can go behind Victory Bell, dude. Victory Bell still is more anime famous. <laughs> Alright, so Lickitung is also, is trash. I'll, I'll, look, I don't even fully hate this thing's design, this thing is just useless. Licky Licky is a weird looking Pokemon also, but to be fair, it's not about the design, this thing is useless. This thing is not a good normal type. It is bulky, but doesn't have a lot of super power behind it. It also has a really bad moveset. This thing is garbage in its uh, debut game, and it doesn't get much better later on. There's, uh, there's better normal types to choose from down below. We'll get to them. There is one famous episode of Lickitung though, where Jesse has one, and in the in the doll in the in the Pokemon fighting tournament for the doll set, where Jesse starts to make a comeback with her Lickitung, and Psyduck saves the day. Coughing and wheezing. So we were mentioning Jesse's Pokemon earlier. James definitely got the better in the deal with wheezing. Wheezing is way more useful than 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 uh, Arbok. Wheezing is hella more useful than Arbok. Weezing is a great defensive poison wall in Gen 1. Of course, it's still poison, so you gotta look out for those psychic people. And also, Weezing would eventually be get a funny Galarian form with Doug Dimidome hat in Gen 8. Uh, we, we, again, Arbok was sort of left behind. Arbok didn't even get a Galarian form. De I mean, clearly the favoritism lies in Weezing, and I don't blame him. Weezing is the more useful Pokemon. Weezing can go right behind the Nidoran lines. Again, my premier choice of poison types would be the ne would be would be well Gengar and like Nidoking eventually. But Weezing isn't that bad. I used a Weezing in in one of my Pokemon Blue playthroughs. Coughing, I love coughing. I love its skull and crossbone design. Coughing can go like right here. Oh, uh, here we go. Right on these nuts, bro. Right on these nuts. Uh, Rhydon is a pretty okay Pokemon. It's it's a little on the famous side. It is used by your rival. Eventually, would be get evol evolved from and become better. Uh, Rhydon is ite. Rhydon's ite. Rhydon can be like right up here. Rhydon. <laughs> and Rhyhorn can go behind Ghastly. So moving on, Chansey. So Chansey's the ever famous Pokemon used by used by Nurse Joy. And it's a really good Eviolite user, especially since it gets an Evolve form in Gen 2. It is the tanky bish that keeps on tanking. Uh, I've used, like, I have, like, I have a competitive Chansey, but to be honest, I don't use it much. I don't, like, super duper vibe, vibe with it. But it can't be understated how fucking bulky this thing is. And again, it's famous because it's used by Nurse Joy in the anime all the time. 
I'll put it, I'll put Chansey right above Weezing. Uh, Tangela. I do not like Tang. I do not like base Tangela at all. Tangela, base Tangela is ass. The only thing it has to its name is that it's not, it's pure grass. It's the only pure grass in Gen 1, actually. But base Tangela is bad. You, it eventually becomes better in Gen 4 and to become Tangrowth, but that's just about it. Ah, Kangaskhan. What an interesting Pokemon. What an interesting Pokemon. It first has the famous anime episode where where the parents drop their kid out of the chopper and ends up being raised by Kangaskhans. It it eventually gets famous because it also has a really, really good mega form, starting in Gen 6, where the kid jumps out of the pouch and starts punching along with its mama. Yes, I, for what it's worth, I do like Kangaskhan. It's a pretty good Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium also. It, it, again, it's a pretty good normal type, but there's still one more normal type down below that I absolutely love. But Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan's I. I think I'm going to put Kangaskhan, again, it's funny that I'm bunching up the normal types. I'm going to put Kangaskhan under... Well, I don't know. No, 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 Kangaskhan goes under Weezing. Weezing still has anime famousness on its side. Kangaskhan goes under Weezing. There we go. Horsey and Seedra. They're not great. Seedra is really not a good choice for water types. I was just gushing about all these good water types you can have. Seedra's not one of them. It would eventually get an evolved form in Gen 2 being Kingdra, and Kingdra is actually really fucking good. But these things aren't. These things aren't. You can do so much better. Seedra and, like, oh, I'm not even really in the mood for a horsey. Horsey can be, like, right here. They, you, you, you have so much better choice for water in Gen 1. And, yeah, they would eventually just become Kingdra, but Kingdra's not here, so that's where they end up. Ah, Goldeen and Sea King. Goldeen is not a good Pokemon. Goldeen is arguably even worse than Horsey. At base form, Goldeen's worse than Horsey. Well, well, they were both used by Missy. I think Goldeen was used a little more... I think Goldeen was used a little more by Missy, though, so this technically has a little more anime famousness on the side. No, but Horsey is in Pokemon Puzzle League over Goldeen. Never mind, I... Well, mm, it's it's close, actually. Um, okay, next up is Seeking. So, we have the one meme, fuck yes, Seeking. It learns a pivot move... Well, it learns a pivot ability lightning rod as a hidden ability. That is hella hilarious that you can't hit this thing with lightning, technically, if you want to get its hidden ability. That's pretty funny. Seeking, though, as a whole isn't exactly great, especially not in Gen 1. You have so many better choices in Gen 1. And it's also a physical, it's more of a physical based water type, which again, suffers in Gen 1, because all Gen 1 water moves are special due to the not special split existing yet. Seeking can be like right under Venomoth. Ah, ah, what? No, yeah, no, yeah. Seeking can end up right under Primate. Ah, Star You and Star Me. Well, these are, boy, what's there to say about these? These Pokemon are hella famous. Misty uses both of them in her gym battle. She uses both of them in Puzzle League. She used them a lot in the anime. Boy, it's, it's hard not to like these things. Uh, Starmie is hella good. Oh, God. Why, why does that keep happening? Stop that. Starmie is hella good. I'm going to put Starmie actually right here in bottom of S. So, if, strictly speaking, Starmie is probably more higher tier than Tentacruel. But, as far as my personal list goes, I still prefer using Tentacruel. Star U has the great hi sounds, and it's both sound clips in the anime and Pokemon Puzzle League. Star U can go right here. Again, using a Star Me is hella good in the games. It's a good, it's a good ass Pokemon. Mr. Mime! Mr. Mime is not good. Mr. Mime is Psychic type, which saved itself, but it's probably the worst Psychic type in Gen 1. Hypno and Alkazam are way better than it. Way better than it. It's probably just only slightly better than Golem, in my opinion. It has that interesting episode at the end of the Indigo League where the circus is nearby Palatown when Ash returns, and the and you have like the lazy Mr. Mime and the, and the two Mr. Mimes. And of course, we have the famous Mr. Mime that goes to live with Ash's mom, and other stuff, I guess, with Ash's mom. All right, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two things. One, I admit Charizard's a little low. It does have anime famousness and Smash on its side, so I need to raise up Charizard a lot, actually. Charizard probably deserves, probably top of B tier when I really think about it. 
<laughs> Mr. Mom can go ahead of Vileplume. I'm fine with that. Anime Famousness saves it, but it is Psychic, so it's still strong in Gen 1, but it's the worst Psychic type. It's also, also you have to get it through trade, so it's nicknamed something dumb, and you get drowsy earlier, and Hypno's just better than it, so again, it's it's hard to find footing with Mr. Mime. Ah, Scyther. Scyther, Scyther, Scyther. Scyther and Electabuzz. Who can't forget that season one episode with the two... Gangs? Or, I mean, they weren't gyms. Dojos? Something were fighting? Remember the Scyther versus Electabuzz war? <laughs> um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Scyther's... I mean, eventually evolves into Scizor, which is a really good Pokemon and one of my favorites. Scyther is... okay. To be honest, it's not super useful in Gen 1. It doesn't have a good... It doesn't have a good learn set. Bugs moves weren't there yet. It, Scyther, base Scyther eventually gets better in the later gens, but it's not like fully, fully there yet. It has good stats, but not much to use it on. That's the biggest problem with Scyther. Scyther probably goes a little bit behind Bioplume. Jinx, on the other hand, okay, so boy, where do I get started with Jinx? The fucking... The arguable racial stereotype, or was it representing some sort of doll or something? I've lost track regarding this fucking Pokemon. Some say it's a racial stereotype. Some say it's supposed to represent some sort of, like, animated fictional being that dresses up in, like, a karate skirt or whatever it's fucking called. I fucking lost track. I've heard people saying it is a racial stereotype, and I've heard experts saying that, no, it's based on some sort of... Not yokai, but some sort of spirit-based thing. I've, I fucking, I fucking lost track. I don't, I don't fucking know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, for what's worth, I like Jinx. Jinx is hella useful. It's ice psychic. It's, it's one of the only non-water ice types in Gen One. Ice psychic is a really good typing. It's hella good special. Um, Jinx is obviously really good to have, especially when you're fighting Lance. And yeah. And eventually, Fortune gets left behind because Electabuzz and Nagmar and Scyther eventually get evolution, so. But Jinx is still hella pretty good. Jinx can probably go. Jinx can probably go behind Chansey. Ah, Electabuzz. Ah, oh, with this funny. Uh, Electabuzz is okay. I mean, it does eventually evolve into Electivire, and I fucking love Electivire. Electivire is a beast. Electabuzz, though, you have better choices for Electric types in Gen 1. Electabuzz can go right behind Charizard and Beach. Electabuzz is aight, but you have slightly better options in for your Electric types. In fact, I'm gonna pivot over to Jolteon real fast. Jolteon is a fantastic Pokemon. Jolteon can, can probably get bottom of... No, 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 not that high. Jolteon can get nearly top of A. Jolteon is a fantastic Pokemon. It's a great evolution. It's fast. It has it has great special attack. It, 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 can, it can learn Pin Missile, which is a rare move against Psychic Pokemon in Gen 1. Jolteon's a good, good type. Jolteon was also used in Pokemon Puzzle League. It's the only one of any of the Eevees used in Pokemon Puzzle League. Used by Lieutenant Surge, go figure. With its Jolt, Jolt voice, uh, voice lines. Magmar. So Magmar is pretty famous. It has that famous Blaine episode where it almost kills Pikachu. And eventually does evolve into Magmortar. And Paul used a Magmortar in in the Gen 4 anime. Magmar's pretty dope. And Magmar's also used in Pokemon Puzzle League by Blaine. I'm gonna put it right behind Electabuzz. Electabuzz eventually mm, No no, that's not fair to that's not fair to Magmar. Electabuzz eventually evolves into... Uh, Electivire is more useful and competitive than than Magmortar. But Mag, as base words, Magmar is more famous in Gen 1. So I'm going to give the slight edge to Magmar on this list. Alright, so Pinsir. Uh, well, Pinsir and Scyther are sort of like rivals. Well, it's most, no, so Scyther would get evolution, Pinsir wouldn't, but they would both eventually get Megas. Pinsters, I mean, we also have the famous episode where the bug trainer in episode 4 uses the pincer against Ash's Metapod and he thinks he's going to crack in half. 
Pinscher has better stats than Scyther, but it still has a bad moveset to level up with. To be honest, at the end of the day, I do prefer Scizor, but Pinscher gets the slight edge in, in Gen when we're talking about base Gen 1. Tauros! Ah, Tauros. Famous and infamous at the same time. Ash caught 30 of these, and we American fans had no idea how and why. That's because this episode was banned due to a realistic gun being pointed at Ash. Ash also rode a Dragonair in that episode. It also it served Ash well. It it beat it beat uh, beat Drake's Venusaur in um in uh, the Orange Island Conference. So yeah, to I mean, and also Tauros itself is also a powerhouse. It is a good Gen One Pokemon. It is fast and hits hard, and actually had pretty good special stat in Gen One also. Tauros is actually probably the second best normal type in Gen One. Arguably, it probably gets top of eight tier due to every due to everything mentioned above. So we have Magikarp and Gyarados, the very famous Magikarp which you buy for 500 Poke Dollars near Mount Moon. Gyarados is a hella good Pokemon though. Gyarados is a phenomenal Pokemon. Again, Gen 1 just having so many good fucking water types. Gyarados deserves its spot right there. Used by Lance. Used by your rival also. Uh, Magikarp. Magikarp is very as a very famous and infamous Pokemon also. Again, it, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to really rate this. Its base form sucks. It's a pain to train, but it's it's very famous though at the same time. So where would this even out is the big question. Being famous enough, Magikarp can go right behind Rhydon. Anyway, Lapras. So Lapras. Lapras is adorable. Lapras again, another good water type. Fuck. Damn, man, I can't hold all these good water types. Lapras being very famous in the anime, escorting Ash to the Orange Islands, eventually tying with Drake's Gengar and proving itself useful. Lapras is Lapras, uh, Lapras is, uh, used by Lorelei also. Lapras is very, very good. It's bulky, it, it learns good ice moves, ice always being a fantastic offensive type. Honestly, me and Lapras always vibe better than Starmie, so I'm gonna put Lapras ahead of Starmie. Again, due to anime famousness, it's it again due to the whole Orange Island saga. So yeah. So Ditto. So of course we had the famous, famous Duplique episode, where where Ditto fucking shows off its Ditto powers and stomps Ash's Bulbasaur. Eat shit, Bulbasaur. Oh Ditto, Ditto. Oh Ditto, the ever famous, the ever famous cut Pokemon from Melee eventually brought back in Smash Ultimate to fully to finally be in Smash. Ditto. Again, I, I have a competitive ditto. <laughs> so it basically just has imposter and max HP EVs, but I, I, I like Ditto's gimmick. It's funny, it's trolly, and I and I like to troll people. So Ditto Ditto's fun to use. Ditto can end up right here. Ah, the Eevee lines. Boy oh boy. Pikachu and Eevee locked in some sort of slight rivalry. Pikachu and Eevee being the box faces. Of, of of the uh, Gen 1 uh, remakes on the Switch. E uh, Gary's Eevee eventually beating Ash's Pikachu in, in at the beginning of the Johto season. Or yeah, or, 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 or near the end of Orange Islands, whatever you want to fucking call it. Eventually, Gary not using his Umbreon in, in, in when he faced Ash in the Silver Conference, which was hella weird. I mean, it eventually, I mean, it eventually revealed that Squirtle was Gary's starter. Hey, yo, remember how the remember how the fucking anime baited us? We thought Eevee was Gary's starter because we thought they were basing it off of yellow version. So we all thought Gary uh, Eevee was Gary's starter, but eventually we revealed in the episode that Squirtle was his starter. See, Gary said Squirtle was the best starter because he says Ash and Gramps gave me the best one while spinning the Pokeball. See, Squirtle Squirtle is the best starter. Ah, uh, as far as Eevee goes. I like it for the most part. I'm not super in love with it like other people. I just look I look forward more to its evolved forms. Except Flareon. Eevee probably goes right here just for potential sake and famous sake. Well, no, that, that, that implies it's more famous than Charizard. Um, well, it's not, but I Charizard Charizard's in B for bias. <laughs> Uh, I love Vaporeon. I love Vaporeon. It's arguably my most favorite Eevee evolution, tied with like Umbreon. I I like I like my Eevees tanky, if you can imagine. I love Vaporeon. Vaporeon's a good Pokemon. Vaporeon gets bottom of S. It again, if you're again, I just it's so much water. But Vaporeon's a good Pokemon. It has really good base set total. It's tanky. It can learn the ice moves to get its coverage. Vaporeon's good as fuck. Flareon, on the on the other hand, holy shit, is Flareon bad? 
Flareon cannot make use of its good attack until way later in the series. Holy sh- even then, its learn set is still not amazing. It still has trouble. Flareon can go right here. Flareon is not good. Flareon is Garbaggio. You, you are disgraced to fire types. There is way better than you. All right, let's see here. Oh, boy. What a fucking famous Pokemon, right? Porygon. Boy. A very infamous Pokemon. It is now cut from all anime appearances due to a seizure. That was caused... Well, all right, let's be real here. It wasn't Porygon's fault. It was caused by Team Rocket firing missiles at that Pikachu Thunderbolted. The, the, the root of the cause is, is, is Team Rocket. Don't blame Pikachu, blame Team Rocket. That, yeah, Porygon is sus. Uh, for what it's worth, Porygon isn't actually really good in Gen 1. It's also hard to get. You have to fucking get money at the game corner. Porygon's so hard to get, it's not worth in Gen 1. Eventually, when you get Porygon 2 and Porygon Z in Gen 2 and 4, respectively, it's a pretty good special attacker. It's Ite for a normal special attacker. But Porygon base is actually not good. It's actually not worth it at all to get it. It's arguably worse than Parasect. But then, but then again, it is famous. But then again, it is infamous, so fuck. How do I go about this? It's, it's, it's famous and infamous at the same time. You know what, Porygon? You have to pay for your sins. You'll be in D tier. So, me and Snorlax put it, put it in mid-C. Alright, fine. Me and Snorlax get along so well. I love Snorlax. One Ash to Snorlax is ever famous. Winning him a bunch of battles and stomping two of Gary Oak's Pokemon in the Silver Conference. Snorlax being the ever first famous roadblock of Red and Blue. And a Pokemon close to my heart, because well, let's just say me and Snorlax share a body type. Snorlax, it's also, he's also really good in Stadium and overall really good normal type. My favorite, arguably one of my most favorite normal types of all time. Snorlax is all is really fucking good. Snorlax can go Snorlax can go right here. Again, Meowth is still higher than it just due to anime famousness. We have the ever famous Dome vs. Helix, made popular by Twitch Plays Pokemon, circa 2014. As far as the fossils go, I've always been an Omastar fan. Look, even before look, po Twitch Plays Pokemon memes a sign, I've always liked Omastar better. Omastar gets a better learn set. It's rock water though, so it unfortunately suffers heavily to grass. I'm gonna I'm gonna separate Electabuzz with with Omastar and Magma with Omastar. Omastar is okay. Again, you can still do much better with water, unfortunately, but its rock typing is a lean on the unique side with water. Omanyte being Lord Helix. Oh boy, Omanyte can go right here. Uh, Kabutops. I was I think again. I'm always on Team Omastar over Team Kabutops. Kabutops is. Learns has a worse moveset than Omastar. Uh, Kabutops can probably just go ahead and Krabby. That's just about it. Kabut Kabuto, I don't really like at all. I think Kabuto's. It has those weird red eyes. Uh, I'm warming up to it a little. Uh, Kabuto can probably go down here. I'm. Uh, eh, I'm eh, eh, eh. Aerodactyl, also famous in the episode with the fossils, <laughs> where where it's carrying Ash and they got and Jigglypuff has to sing it to sleep. Okay, also used by Lance and on his team, so it is famous. Aerodact- I do like Aerodactyl for what it's worth. It's not my, like, most favorite Pokemon to use. I do like it for what it's worth. It is famously used on Lance's team, and it's a, it's a fast rock flying type, which is unique. It can go right there. Articuno. Articuno is really good. Again, being Gen 1, its ice will extremely help you. Extremely help you against- against Lance. That being said, though, Ice Flying unfortunately suffers due to Rock and the ever popular Stealth Rocks later on in the series. Articuno is perfectly fine there. Articuno is a good Pokemon. Again, I Ice is hella useful on the offensive. You know who sucks, though? Moltres. Moltres is not good. Fire Flying is more useless than Ice Flying. Again, Charizard gets away with it because Charizard can get a little bit of a learn set, but Moltres... Also, Charizard gets away with it more because he has different forms and shit. Moltres, you're not looking too hot. Haha. <laughs> Articuno gets a little, t a little uh, time. Well, in the anime too, when it fights Ash's Charizard, uh, one of the pyramid heads use it. 
And also, Red uses it in the Pokemon Origins anime when he fights Mewtwo. It gets body, but he uses it. Yeah, Moltres is stinky. Uh-oh. Ho-Oh's better. I guess you can slightly go ahead of Rapidash. I mean, yeah, you're a legendary Pokemon with legendary stats. I would use you over Rapidash, but... Man, you are underwhelming for a legendary Pokemon. Zapdos fucking slaps, though. Zapdos is hella good. Electric Flying is a good typing. Electric is also extremely useful. Again, it can be considered cheating using legendary Pokemon. I don't usually use legendary Pokemon in casual runs, but it, it's hella good. Zapdos probably gets top of that. Zapdos is, re is a really good Pokemon. Dratini! Dratini, well, I mean, the whole... I look, for what's worth, I like Dragonite. Dragonite's a very... I'll start with Dragonite. Dragonite's a very famous Pokemon. You have the very creepy episode where Bill looks for it on his lighthouse and that giant shadowy Dragonite appears. They didn't want to reveal its true colors because they wanted to hide the super powerful Pokemon. Dragonite, ever famously used by Lance, under-evolved at some points, or, uh, or under-leveled at some points due to the cheating level system. Ash beat one in the Orange Island Conference. It took four of his Pokemon to bring it down, but Pikachu eventually did bring it down. Ash also has, according to what I'm hearing, Ash also has one now in, in the Gen 8 anime. That's wild. Anyway, um, Dragonite. Dragonite can probably go right here. It can go right next to Lapras, who also had a big part in the Orange Island Conference. Dragonair, I, for what's worth, I love Dragonair's design. Actually, one of my friends' favorite Pokemon is Dragonair due to the nice design. And it has, like, the wing ears, just like Wartortle. Dragonair's design alone pretty much makes it A somewhere. Right under Articuno. Dratini, and Dratini has base form. It's pretty good. Dratini can go right ahead of Cubone for base form. All right, our final two Pokemon. Yes, the Dragonite line was considered. Again, they would eventually be considered pseudo-legendary because Dragonite has a base stat total of 600, but yes. Alright, so Mew and Mewtwo, very famous Pokemon, very famous Pokemon. The infamous Mew that was hard to get hard to get in Gen 1 games. You had to bring your game to like the Pokemon Center to get a uh, to get a legit Mew. You can also do the very famous glitch getting Mew, where you teleport and fly away from an opponent. And you, and, you, and you walk to an edge of a town and you get the Mew glitch. Which I did in my 3DS Pokemon. Mew, uh, Pokemon first movie literally revolves around them. Mewtwo being an edgelord ass motherfucker about his birth conditions. Of course, being more famous than Mew though, being in Smash also. Again, he, he was in he was in he was in three Smash uh, he was in three Smash Bros games, Melee Four and Ultimate. Mewtwo goes right up here again. He's again he's a strong legendary. He fucks. He's in multiple movies. He's, he was in the first movie. He's very famous. He goes right there. His 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 feminity gives him gives him really nearly top of S. Mew is right up there on S also. Mew's no Mew's no slack itself, but not as much as Mewtwo unfortunately. Mew can go right here. So there we have it. So I tried to categorize the Pokemon to my best ability on how I feel about them. Again, as you as you saw, this list mixes an entire entire reasoning of competitive, my personal favorites, how I like their design, how they influence my life, how I've seen them in other media, etc. This is the best I got and this is what we ended up with. Take it easy. Oh, I'm sorry. Train on as Pokemon says. Train on. Train on YouTube. Pokemon Run! Pokemon Run!